2005, the coast of Florida is struck by a huge die-off of sea life. Crews armed with pitchforks and gas masks clean up tens of thousands of dead sea creatures washed ashore from the Gulf of Mexico. In 2007, a similar event infects the coast of Southern California, leaving the beaches littered with dead sea lions, fish, birds, and whales. It is an image that comes straight from the book of Revelation. The death of, of living things in the sea. Uh, at first it sounds impossible because the sea is so vast, and yet the scriptures clearly prophesy that everything in the sea will die at some point during the judgments that come from heaven. So there's no question it can happen and will happen. These massive waves of seaborne death are directly connected to the next sign of the prophecy. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man. And every living soul died in the sea. In the second ball in the book of Revelation, we see all the rivers in planet Earth turning into blood. In the third ball, we see all the oceans turning into blood. A wrathful God transforming the waters into blood is a recurring event in the Bible. But what does it mean? God turns the water to blood, and it causes the, the fish to die, and it means you can't drink it and sustain life with water. So the idea that blood, which is supposed to be confined in the veins of living creatures, is now in oceans and rivers, is a symbol of the dislocation, the upheaval, the catastrophe that God is willing to bring on the world when he is displeased. And it happened in Egypt, according to the Hebrew Bible, it will happen at the end of days, according to the, the book of Revelation. Throughout biblical times, blood has a very powerful symbolic meaning. Blood has always been, from the beginning of the Judeo-Christian tradition, has been a symbol of great sanctity. It becomes just as important in the book of Revelation. Blood can also be a powerful symbol of death. For centuries, water turning into blood is seen symbolically, but now science offers a different perspective. Can there be scientific truth to water turning blood red? For reasons that remain mysterious for centuries, the oceans and places along the world's coastline sometimes turn a blood-like shade of red. When this happens, beaches become littered with dead sea life. Everything from minnows to whales perish and are washed ashore. Today, we call these phenomena red tides. Red tides are explained by a leading marine ecologist at the University of Southern California, Dave Hutchins. Red tide is a common name for a group of single-celled algae that live in coastal water and produce toxins. They produce large blooms that can be really damaging. Some of the organisms that make these blooms actually have a reddish coloration, and when there's enough of them, they can make the water turn literally red, like blood. In fact, the book of Revelation is written on a small island in the Aegean Sea. It's highly probable that red tides are well known to the local fishermen and to the wider population that reads the prophecies. Given that the sign calls for our waters to turn into blood, it might very well be linked to the phenomenon of red tides. Can a red tide become that deadly? Again, science offers us a surprising answer. The red tide algae produce very potent toxins that can kill humans and other vertebrates. And they can literally do the same types of damage that a nerve gas would do. The big culprits are shellfish, uh, filter feeding shellfish, clams of any variety and mussels. These are organisms that basically sit there and they pump water through a very, very fine mesh and they collect algae in their stomachs. Most of the poisonings that come from algal toxins 
have the name shellfish poisoning in them. So there's amnesic shellfish poisoning, which causes a loss of short-term memory. There's paralytic shellfish poisoning, which causes paralysis. There is neurologic shellfish poisoning, which has respiratory effects. A lot of these things get into our food web by virtue of the fact that we eat some organisms from the ocean that are filter feeders. A red tide could escalate, and the threat could spread from the food we eat to the air we breathe. Some types of red tide release the toxins to the water, and they can actually get aerosolized out of the water and into the air where people can breathe them. That would be like our oceans emitting clouds of lethal nerve gas. The impact on people living near the sea would be devastating. If a gigantic red tide strikes all the oceans at once, a vast majority of sea life on Earth will die, as will the people that eat and breathe the toxins the red tides produce. The millions of other people around the world who depend on the seas for food will starve. The human suffering and death will be mind-boggling. There's no doubt that many would see this as a fulfillment of the seven signs. Both pollution and warming are, in fact, upsetting the ecological balance that normally checks red algae growth, fueling a rise in the number and severity of red tides worldwide. If this deadly toxin continues to thrive, it could overwhelm the planet. If toxic algae win and continue to win and always win, we have a very dire situation. Those attuned to the prophecy of the seven signs agree, but for different reasons. So this sign really could be a terrifying portent of worldwide killer red tides. It also has a link to our next sign, where again, destruction comes from something that's a direct source of life on Earth. I'm not, I'm not referring to volume or or, or, or emotion or any of that. I'm talking about fervor and intensity and desire. I imagine that... I imagine that for the first millennia that someone's in hell, they're not praying for anyone else but this. A picture of that one. The first thousand years they're sitting in the lake of fire under continual anguish and torment. God help! Get me out of here! I'm sorry! I want to receive you now! But it'll never work. It will never work. The Bible says that hell is eternal. Hell is eternal. They'll say, Pl please save me now. I, I, I regret my sins. I, I want your forgiveness. But this will never work. The Bible says their judgment is internal and unrelenting. They had every opportunity to get saved and receive forgiveness while here on earth and they refuse. The mind that is set on the things of the flesh is death. It is eternal damnation. It is at enmity against God. It is hostile towards Him. I can pretty much describe accurately those of you who are right now on the Broadway of destruction. What fills your thoughts? I'm not asking if you're a member of this church or whether you own a Bible and even maybe read it. What concerns your thoughts? That'll tell me and that will tell you who your God is. Your God is who you think about. For I will not hear the prayer. I will turn my face away from thee. They shall cry and entreat, and I will not hear. For I have turned my face from them. We all know when living an evil life that hell is what awaits, and that is why we are anxious. And so no one can say that they don't believe in hell. They do. And the proof is their anxiety, and their worry, and their frustration, and their anger. A soul that is in a state of mortal sin is in close contact with hell. We are in an age that is hellish. Because we are in an age in which mortal sin is praised, and mortal sin is cherished, and mortal sin is lived. We are in an age that is a kind of hell. An angel once appearing to St. John Bosco 
showed him the boys inside of his school. Now, St. John Bosco was a saint. There was an ST in the front of his name. He ran a school of Catholic boys. There were no non-Catholics in his school. And it was in the good old days. It was in the 1800s. And the angel showed the soul of his good Catholic boys that this saint was in charge of. And he saw that the vast majority of them were in the state of mortal sin and were already in hell. In fact, he saw these boys burning in hell. And the angel said to the, and he said to the angel, but I just talked to that boy a couple of hours ago. And I just spoke to that boy a couple of hours ago. Did he die? The angel said to John Bosco, he has been His soul is right here in hell as he is in the state of mortal sin. And though he does not physically feel the pains that you see him experiencing, it is only the thin veil of life that keeps him from feeling that pain. If he passes to eternity now, he will experience the pain that you 